There has been some wide-ranging and often heated debate this year about the future of Australia and just how many people should inhabit the continent. What quickly becomes clear is that the underlying issues have been divorced from the conversation that has become obsessed with numbers. Debate about population is not really debate about population. It's a proxy for a whole lot of other debates. So um, there's a debate about migration um, and how do we manage the migration intake. There's a debate about the environment uh, and how is our changing population impacting on that. Uh, there's a debate about infrastructure and what are our governments doing to ensure that we've got you know, adequate transport, public transport roads. There's a, a debate about housing, um, where our, our house building is not keeping up with population growth. So I think this is the issue. It's not just one policy area. It's pretty much, and I know this is sort of a cliche, but it's, it's a whole of government type um, type problem, and that's what makes it so complicated. Australians don't seem to be worried about the size of Australia's population, but rather where, and importantly, how that population is going to live. Current infrastructure, it's too many. So with an, if infrastructure expands to cope with the people, it's fine, but without that, it's not fine. Where they're going to be living, they ain't got the houses, they ain't okay. got the property, they ain't got the infrastructure, and they ain't going to have it in Sydney. Sydney's not in a very good uh, situation for improving the transport and stuff like that. Sparking the debate earlier this year was the Federal Treasury's intergenerational report that unlocked the projection that there could be 36 million people living in Australia by 2050. Fergus Hansen, a research fellow with the Lowy Institute for International Policy, was in charge of a nationally representative opinion poll that was conducted back in March of this year. It was reported that 69% of Australians wanted Australia's population to be smaller than the 36 million projected in the intergenerational report. But at the same time, 72% wanted a bigger population than the current 22 million. Well, I think there's a big gap between the current population size of about 22 million people and the, the prediction in the Treasury report of 36 million. And I think people in Australia accept that Australia is growing and that it's uh, migrants that come to Australia bring a lot of positives. Um, but at the same time, looking to 36 million people is a, is a big jump. And I think in the context of the issues we're having in states here in Australia of uh, infrastructure bottlenecks, of poor public transport, um, particularly in big states like New South Wales where we have a real failure of, of government. Um, I think there, um, that's the reason why people see that jump as so difficult to, to fathom. Now it is a projection that goes out a long way in the future, um, but I think people, it does also show that people are prepared to take a bigger population um, and, and see that as a positive thing. So what exactly is the problem with a misguided debate? James Ivanatakis, a lecturer in the humanities at the University of Western Sydney, explains. So what really concerns me about the debate is not so much that we shouldn't have a numbers debate, it's just the debate is so focused on numbers that it leaves everything else behind. And I think that's the thing, is we don't have the other debates, like are we using water, you know, are we using water in the most intelligent way? Do we have the right crops for Australia? Are we designing our cities well? These are the questions we should be having, not just being obsessed on numbers. Because the truth is, is Sydney's already over capacity, and it's got nothing to do with numbers. It's just got to do with stupid planning. You know, governments of, of both Labor and Liberal have basically ne neglected planning for our city. And this is where this is the debate we should be having: What should our cities look like in 2050? Not how many people should be living in them. What more, says Jessica Brown, is that this debate only results in inaction from our politicians. That's what makes it so easy for politicians to just start talking about population mm. growth rather than trying to face up to all these really difficult issues they've got. While the debate has notably traversed issues such as sustainability, environmental damage and economic growth, for most, the numbers debate is a quality and way of life question. For all the scepticism surrounding the debate, one thing is clear. As the obsession with numbers falls away, we may find ourselves finally discussing policy more holistically. We will notice that issues once perceived as unrelated are intimately connected.